For most of the hundreds of thousands of spectators who attend the annual Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, attention focuses on the brightly colored orbs that fill the Albuquerque sky. But the events could not happen without the dedication of thousands of earthbound volunteers who brave the cold mornings and ungodly hours to provide a seamless experience, while vendors quench the desire for Fiesta keepsakes and literally fuel the pilots and crowds with food and drink. Yes, waiting in traffic is a pain but without legions of parking attendants, ticket takers, vendors, and ambassadors, the fiesta would be semi-organized chaos. Volunteerism is really the essence of the Balloon Fiesta. Balloon Fiesta has a paid year-round staff of 20 people. And to put on an event that brings in 170-some million dollars in nine days, that brings in 800 and almost 900,000 visitors to the field over those nine days. There's no way those 20 people can do it. So we def depend on a huge cadre of volunteers. A number of years ago, we started calling them navigators. Um, we have somewhere on the order of 1,000 to 1,100 navigators, and they do literally everything from filling propane tanks for heaters that are in tents, to greeting people as they come into the park, to being on scoring teams, chase crew teams, propane filling teams, information booths, gondola club ambassadors, chase club ambassadors, group tours. I'm gonna get in trouble for missing probably 90% of the groups. There are so many things that go on, I can't tell you all of them. And we certainly could not do that without them. There's a, a concessions coordinator that controls all of the um, operations on Main Street, all of the vendors on Main Street. Uh, there are the parkers, uh, the, the people that direct traffic and, and get people into the parking lot. And the Kiwanis has done that for many, many years. Um, extremely difficult, early morning, out in the cold. You know, they're, they're really underappreciated. Well, I've been in Kiwanis since approximately 2003, and from the very first day, everybody who joins Kiwanis learns that the balloon fiesta is one of the most important activities that we, you know, under, undertake every year. Uh, in Kiwanis, when, we, when you start working for the balloon fiesta uh, as a volunteer, uh, you get involved and you'll start out just, you know, you've never been out here before. You come out and you, they'll, you'll start you out and you might be parking cars or you might be uh, selling tickets or taking money for people coming in to park. So you get started and you, you do that in the beginning and as you, after a year or two or whatever, you get experience in it and depending on uh, your capabilities, uh, you, you become a supervisor. They asked me to go out and work in the lot, which is to the west, where the balloonists came in. And if you want to know about that job, it was to be there with a flashlight and a vest and to make sure that these people who were late to get onto the field, usually, and who were riding these pickups, and you know, sometimes on the back of them, and make sure that they didn't drive over the cliff of the, the balloon field there to the west of the, of the actual field we know today. We come in starting at as uh, supervisory staff around two or so in the morning and uh, everybody else is expected to be here around 2.30 or so and uh, we got to get them in. We've got to first of all get them signed in. Uh, we've got to get them uh, signed to different locations around the field and get with their supervisors they are going to take them out then to that and it's a long way from our compound to out to the different areas and so get them out there get them set up uh, if it's ticket taking we have to get the booth set up with the cash all set up the tickets and that sort of thing and so it takes a while to make all that happen my first uh, real management job was like the assistant field manager for either the mornings or the afternoons in the earlier years the managers would, would be there for both the morning session and the evening session for, for the whole event. And it was truly, you know, they, they talk about the Ironman sporting event. Well, this was an Ironman volunteer event. By the end of it, it looked like these guys had, you, you know, gone through the gauntlet. They were, 
uh, nerves were shot, they had no sleep for a week, and, and uh, you know, after eating so much uh, food, vendor food, as good as it is, it caught up to them. So, um, when, around the time that I got involved at that level, it was maybe around 2010, um, we were at that point splitting it up into uh, morning shifts and evening shifts. As a matter of course, volunteers often serve as ambassadors for the fiesta. You know, the biggest uh, challenge with uh, dealing with the public is, is that they, first of all, they seem to always come in groups, huge groups. And uh, they've been in a long line, probably to park. And now they're in another long line, pay to get into the, onto the field. And they're going, oh, I don't know if I ever get here. So there again, that's where being a good ambassador is you know, really important to be able to smile and and uh, be helpful and, and sympathetic and try to get them through as quickly as we can. The work of the volunteers provides benefits that most attendees are probably unaware of. Under a contract with Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, Inc., volunteer organizations like Kiwanis are reimbursed for each hour worked at events. In the case of Kiwanis, those payments go directly to the club and then are redistributed to charitable organizations. As a volunteer, of course, I don't get paid anything. I'm just coming down here and giving of my time in order to raise the money to then turn around and give back to, to. And the same is true now with all of our other nonprofits. It might be, might be uh, Rotary or uh, a co uh, Lions Club or Civitan, on and on. Different organizations come in and do basically the same thing. For most of them, I would say it's probably their big uh, fundraiser for the year. 100% of everything that we earn uh, through our volunteer efforts goes right back into the community. In the case of the Qantas Club, uh, probably the, most of that goes back in the form of children's charities, especially young children's charities. But their dedication goes beyond fundraising. It's, so I think the thing that keeps me coming back and many of the others is um, a commit, commitment to the Kiwanis Club. And, and commitment to the community. Um, the, the Balloon Fiesta is a tremendous um, opportunity for Albuquerque to show its best side to the whole country and even to the world. And, and so a lot of the Kiwanis members really feel that and enjoy that part of it. My favorite experience in general was working as the coffee man and the donut guy. After I did the parking and people didn't drive over the cliff, and after I managed uh, the different parking lot or I managed uh, one of the, the ticket areas, um, Homer, Homer Dale, was getting old and his truck was getting old and he was the guy that would get up at 12.30 and be out here with four steaming boiling pots of water because at his house and every other place, you plug in four coffee pots into any one circuit and things blow up so you had to plan ahead and he would have hot chocolate ready and he'd have then it grew from just hot chocolate and coffee to donuts and then you, know, you got to have fruit and then you have to have snack bars and so but he had a little store and he had modified his red pickup truck so that you could flip up the sides of the camper um, top and he had uh, shelves built in just like any kind of vendor would be in the, in, the, in the city or whatever. So he would go through at the very beginning after people uh, were deployed and take coffee around and before it got too busy. And then he'd go back mid-morning after the initial crush was over. But he said, uh, Dave, uh, I can't do this much longer and I'm gonna need somebody to take over. So I, I took over that job for two or three years. Taking over from Homer was the best because he had been a a Kiwanis guy since the 40s, and he had been the president of his own company, and he was the nicest guy, and, and everybody loved him, and the, oh, the APD, and everybody who weren't you know, working for us would come down, and they knew Homer, and so at least I, I kind of got a feeling for, you know, being the kind of cog in that thing, even though it's behind the scenes, that people were counting on, you know, but, and it wasn't that much more pressure than getting up another hour and a half early. Now, imagine a balloon fiesta without donuts, breakfast burritos, and hot coffee, or balloon pins and handmade arts and crafts. It can't be done. 
While the Balloon Fiesta's Main Street may not be Chicago's Magnificent Mile, the 80 food and merchandise vendors offer just about anything balloon-related to satisfy the average guest. In fact, the average guest spent $31 at vendors' booths during the 2019 Fiesta, contributing to the Fiesta's overall economic impact of more than $186 million. Yeah, it is, it's hard to imagine Balloon Fiesta without the vendors, without all the things that sometimes you look forward to um, only getting at Balloon Fiesta. Uh, and I think that that's part of the whole experience for the community, for, for the visitors. There's, uh, there's customers and there's also, um, uh, you know, some of the pilot's crews, the chase crews that, you know, we've seen year after year and, and come back every year. and. Form, we form, formed relationships with them, and uh, yeah, we see familiar faces year after year uh, all the time. Aleem, along with his brother Nahid, own a pair of Dunkin' Donuts franchises in Albuquerque. They began selling coffee and donuts under that banner at the Fiesta in 2008 and discovered a close-knit vendor community. The, the vendor community is very, very tight-knit. Um, it's a lot of the same faces you see uh, you see around town uh, because there a lot of them are local business owners as well. Um, and, and it's the same faces that you see year over year at the Fiesta. So people like to you know come together, help each other out. Uh, for example, someone's out of change or someone's out of ice, you know everybody's kind of sharing and then tallying it up at the end. Um, but yeah, I think the, the general consensus of the vendor community is everyone wants to see each other succeed. Uh, it's not like, uh, it's not competitive in that sense. It's, you know, if one person does well, we're all gonna do well. Um, so it's a very, very tight-knit community. Same, the same faces that we kind of seen over the 10 years. So our first year was 2008, and that year we just had uh, the one, uh, like, vendor booth. Uh, we were selling, uh, uh, just coffee and donuts, a uh, very simple menu. We, we definitely came understaffed. Um, at that time, it was just um, family members who, who were coming to help out, and we had no idea what to expect. So we ordered, you know, a couple gallons of cream, and we brought some coffee grounds and uh, the coffee brewer, and we found out in 15 minutes that, oh man, we're gonna run out here. <laughs> so then we're calling the stores and say, hey, we need more coffee, we need more donuts, and. And, and it turned out to be way bigger than we expected, even in that you know, first day of the first year that we were out there. But by 2019, the brothers felt confident enough to step up and become the official coffee sponsor of the Balloon Fiesta, a challenge they do not take lightly. Becoming the sponsor was a, a natural progression uh, because uh, I think we were, at that point, we already had three concession stands on the field, so we were one of the largest uh, coffee vendors um, and when the local brand kind of uh, ran through their contract and decided not to come uh, I think it was inevitable that we would uh, kind of step up to the plate. So, so being a sponsor at uh, Balloon Fiesta, the coffee sponsor, uh, our obligation is to provide coffee to all the servicemen, so police, fire, all public safety, and to the pilots. So I think last year was uh, 100,000 cups of coffee uh, throughout the, the nine-day festival. You heard that right. 100,000 cups of java over nine days, most of it made and distributed by 6 a.m. But that's in addition to what we uh, sell to the public at our concession booths. So what goes into making 100,000 cups of coffee? It, it's actually quite a feat to make 100,000 cups of coffee in that short amount of time. Uh, the planning starts months in advance. Uh, we have to predict you know, how much uh, coffee ground we'll use, how many cups, lids, cream, sugar, the whole the, kind of the whole spectrum of product that goes into that, you know, just drinking a cup of coffee. 3 a.m. we start brewing, uh, grinding and brewing the coffee on field. We've got a, uh, we've got a pretty large tent uh, on concession, behind concession row, uh, where we've got, I think, uh, 10 or 12 uh, coffee brewers just going all the time. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Brewed right there and then, uh, we just we deliver them to various locations on the field. 
So in fact, part of it was, um, you know, going a week before Fiesta started and uh, mapping out the various locations, timing how long it would take to get from our brew tent to the pilot's pavilion to the public safety office. And then, you know, increasing that time for navigating around all the crowd that's gonna be there at six in the morning. So yeah, it's a, it's a big logistical uh, puzzle. So we usually get two deliveries from our supplier during the week of the fiesta because we just don't have the room to store that many beans um, on site. So we kind of get them as fresh as possible. They, they come on the truck, we get a special delivery during the fiesta uh, just for coffee beans, basically the whole truck full of coffee beans. Oh, like a 18 wheeler semi, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a bit of coffee. Co coffee is the most important fuel, not propane during the balloon fiesta. <laughs> The brothers' advice for vendors in general? I think uh, in our experience, um, every year we plan for a little bit more than last year and we always run a little bit short. So my advice would be to you know, plan way more than you think you're going to use uh, because it's always busier than you can imagine. Our advice? When you return to Balloon Fiesta in 2021, don't forget to thank the volunteers and to tip your vendors. It wouldn't be the same without them. <laughs>